Okay, so I'm going to show you how to change out collimators on a camera. And we're also going to do an intrinsic flood. So when we do floods, we're looking for uniformity in the crystal of the camera to make sure we have good images. And there's two um, main ways we can do that. Intrinsic, which would have a collimator off and we can evaluate the crystal better. And then extrinsic, where we'd leave the collimators on and evaluate the collimators. So for the manufacture of this camera, we're gonna do intrinsic floods. So I'm gonna take off collimators and show you all that. So if you wanna look at the P-scope right here, right here you have options, and we're just gonna click collimator change. Okay, and it just says make sure the collimator server is not docked. So if we look down here, these metal pieces here is where we would dock the collimator cart. So it is not docked, so we're okay to continue. So we'll push continue. And the camera has us move out. Okay, now it says to dock the collimator, so we're going to do that, wind these up. Okay, so that's docked. Now we can push continue. <laughs> okay, if we look at the cart here, we have collimators on B already, so we want to set it for A so that we can take the collimators off. So we're going to push A. <clears throat> so these collimators here are what we call high energy collimators. And they're used for when we're imaging using a radioisotope that contains a high photo peak or a high energy. So one example of that is iodine-131. That is a high energy that we use for um, whole body thyroid imaging or that we use for therapies <clears throat> and we'll image them after therapy to see how that went. So the reason it is thick is because when you have a higher energy isotope, there's more scatter. So this in here, you can't see, but it's septa. And it kind of acts almost as a filter so that the camera only detects the high energy photons. Right, it's like a honeycomb of lead. Yeah, like a honeycomb. So the thicker the septa, the more energy that it's able to stop. Right. Okay, <clears throat> and now this is ready. The ones on the camera are low energy collimators, so when I pull them out, look and see what the difference is. So I'm just going to hook it and make sure it's lined up real good at the track and slowly pull it back. Make sure there's not resistance. Lock it in. Same with the next one. going to pull this card out. So if we look at these two here which are low energy and these two are high energy we see that these are much thinner and these are much thicker in comparison <coughs> because the low energy have less scatter so they need less of a thick septa to get the desired 
energy, the desired photons for the imaging. Okay, so now we have those off. I'll also move this to the side so you can see it better. We're just going to push continue. So what is this that we're looking at, Danny? Um, these are the camera heads. And that's the crystal? Oh, these circles here are the um, photomultiplier tubes. Behind the oh, crystal. Behind the crystal, yeah. Right. So this is very fragile, and you'll see that it says irreplaceable crystal damage, irreparable rather, crystal damage may occur. This is a thallium doped sodium iodide crystal. So whenever one of those photons gets through that honeycomb of lead, um, that's the collimator that Danny was talking about it knocks an electron from its shell which gets registered as a photon of light and that light gets multiplied through um, this the, the detector as well as the camera and it essentially produces um, a scintillation event or a photon of light and all of these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of photons of light all in one area form an image and these circles represent the photomultiplier tubes that are behind this crystal. So if there's ever a photomultiplier tube that comes out, uh, that, that gets burned out, the repair, um, the repair crew can come in and actually know which one they need to replace. So it's basically a map of the photomultiplier tubes that are behind that crystal. Okay, so now we're going to continue. And cancel. <clears throat> okay, so back here. That is called the rear bed, so we're going to lower that down to place a source so that we can do our flood test. to the middle of the detectors. So, okay. so we're going to raise it up. And if you look at bed height, we want to be at um, positive three centimeters. Okay, so roughly three centimeters. And then we're just going to pull this out here and we'll just place our <clears throat> point source right in there. So, come back here. We have the um, lead tackle box where we keep our source for shielding protection. And we're just going to place the source right in here. And you can see it's persisting from the activity from the source. Take that out of there for just one moment so that they can see what it looks like. <laughs> So now those crystals aren't detecting much radiation because it's in the um, tackle box, but if you put the source back in there, then 
and you can see the activity. And what does this <clears throat> represent up here, Danny? Um, K counts per second. So it's the number of photons being detected. Per second. Per second. Okay. So then if you come back to the camera, or to the computer, we would press play and acquire the flood. And when it was done, it would look something like this. <coughs> Here's, right here, you would look for uniformity. So make sure there's not any big dark spots or big white spots, <coughs> that it looks uniform. And we would also check the numbers here. And a, in, a big indication is the numbers usually should be below 3.5%. But even if you get a regular percentage or abnormal percentage, you really want to um, rely on your visual test that you do on here. And if you saw something that showed a defect and it wasn't uniform, you can do another test called um, peak and tuning and then redo the flood and usually that will fix the problem and if it doesn't you can call maintenance to do a high count flood which will also help or reburn or replace the pm tube or whatever yeah, is necessary whatever they need to do to repair it so you can use it